Good morning, uh, my friend, my colleague, and welcome to the Nasa Hospital, the Dana Clinic uh, Workshop in Bariatric uh, and Metabolic Surgery. It's my honor and my pleasure to have you with us today. And also, I want to thank the uh, sponsor, Covidian and Carl Stores, for their support. And uh, today, we are trying to also uh, uh, present for you all the necessary information and uh, knowledge and the practical uh, uh, aspect to help you in order to start. So uh, obesity is a chronic, lifelong, uh, genetically related, life-threatening disease with highly significant medical, psychological, and social, physical, and economic comorbidities. The obesity, the magnitude of the problem is a huge. And uh, if we look into the obesity, the, the trend of obesity worldwide now, we have more than 1.8 billion overweight adults. And we are, uh, uh, in fact, uh, matching the, the hunger people in the world. We have more than, one, more than 1.8 people that they suffer from hunger. We have more than 500 uh, million obese adults uh, with the MI of uh, 50 and above. With the highest BMI in North America, uh, Middle East second, and Europe, Latin America, North Africa, and the Pacific Island. If you look into the, the trend of obesity in the state, this is from the behavioral risk factor surveillance system that was started in 2005. They give you the number, the percentage of population with the BMI of 30. You can see here that the, the number of the state with a BMI of 30, more than uh, uh, 25 to 30 percent of their population is increasing with time. So we see 2007, 2008, and the last one, I think it was in 2013, you can see increasing uh, trend of the obesity in the state and also uh, worldwide. It's a global problem. Uh, if we look into our region, we have the Arab Gulf region countries, the morbid obesity is one of the major growing hazards for the health. We have in Saudi Arabia more than 30 million population, seven to eight of them are non-Saudi, and we have a uh, 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 majority of our uh, population young, with uh, uh, below the age of 25, uh, probably more than 50% of the population. The majority of the population lives a sedentary lifestyle. The overall rate of obesity in Saudi Arabia, it's not less than 45% of our population. We have 30 to 40% with a BMI of, uh, uh, between, uh, we have 40% with BMI of 30 to 40. We have more than 1.5 million of our population who are uh, classified as a morbid obese with a BMI of uh, more than uh, uh, 40. How many procedures we are doing in bariatric surgery? We are doing less than 1.03% of the problem. So last year, in, uh, for the past three years, uh, we have done in 2011 roughly 9,000 procedures. Uh, 12, we have done 13,000 procedures. Last year, we have done close to 20,000 procedures in Saudi Arabia Bariatric Center. Comparing to 20 years back, you can see the big difference. This is uh, the study published by the uh, King Saudi University. And they did this in the study in 1990. They repeated again in 2010. The incidence of obesity, you can see that tremendous uh, uh, increasing the, in the prevalence of the disease. And as you can see, also we have a correlated of also increased number of, of diabetes from 7.5% to 23% <coughs> of our population now uh, diabetic. Uh, we have a major economic development of what is the problem. You can see the reason why we have a problem in Saudi Arabia and in the Gulf region. Uh, see, this is how the end of the Guinness for the biggest uh, fish. So etiology, I don't want to go into the details of the etiology, but this is usually 
the, the problem that caused by obesity and usually it caused the that problem by abnormal production of hormones and peptides and inflammation in the fat cells that can cause all these comorbid diseases associated with the obesity. Uh, this is, these are the medical problems. Almost every organ system is affected by the obesity. You just name it. And type 2 diabetes mellitus is highly linked to the obesity and we have uh, <coughs> It's more powerful risk factor for type 2 diabetes. 89 to 90% of type 2 are, baby, are overweight. Uh, um, obesity promotes insulin resistance and causes hyperinsulinemia and later on probably beta cell uh, failure. Weight loss usually uh, with, with bariatric procedure or not will improve or cure diabetes. And tomorrow we have lecture in metabolic surgery. We will mention that in details. If you look into the BMI, the relation between BMI and diabetes, you can see that the multivariant risk factor, risk, uh, uh, it will be almost 40 times when the patient morbid obesity has, uh, he is at risk of diabetes. If you look into the BMI normal, the risk multivariant <coughs> risk almost zero. But with BMI uh, uh, 40, you can see almost the risk is probably 40 times, which is significant. Same thing for the blood pressure. Same thing also for the level of cholesterol. So what's the solution? And in my opinion, uh, this is the responsibility of the government. It's not uh, uh, the government and uh, also non-governmental uh, organization. Uh, it's the responsibility also of the uh, civil society, international society, private sector. They all together play a major role in prevention of obesity. So the first line usually the dietary protocol, uh, therapy, and then exercise. We should promote uh, physical, uh, regular physical activity because this is the only way to maintain <coughs> the, the, the health of the body. When this is probably surgery, uh, is next step. And this is a statement for, uh, from NIH that patients who have been unsuccessful at losing weight for a long time with medical therapy, probably the surgery is the best uh, choice for them with a very good uh, weight, uh, uh, to sustain weight for a longer period. So what are the type of surgery currently uh, in practice? We need to know also the past, what we had in the past. So we can classify the bariatric procedure into three uh, uh, classes or three uh, divisions. A procedure that are purely restricted. In the past, we had the, the uh, BBG, vertical banded gastroplasty. Uh, it's now a history. We have the lab band, adjustable gastric banding, probably in the near future it will be also uh, in the past. And uh, this procedure usually reduce the intake, the food intake and the calorie intake without any effect in the absorption of the, of the food. Uh, currently we have the combustive procedure, the rising procedure which is a sleep gastrectomy. We have, uh, this is just uh, to, to look uh, back to the history of the recent procedure. Uh, Mason has started the horizontal gastroplasty and then they added the elastic ring because of the dilatation, because of the uh, uh, increase in the pouch size and dilatation of the stoma. Usually those patients, they, they had insufficient weight loss or weight regain soon after surgery. So they just modify it to a elastic ring <coughs> and then they and another uh, uh, technique, but with incontinuity, they stay with an incontinuity with a problem of fistulation between the pouch and the remnant stomach. And uh, later on, they did the division of the uh, staple line. <coughs> the band, the band uh, that was uh, uh, introduced by Belgian surgeon, Cadier and Bilashev in the early 90s, uh, uh, it was introduced by open surgery a few days, a uh, few years before that, but laparoscopic, uh, the first laparoscopic bariatric procedure done by them uh, because the lap band was easy to use by 
the technique of laparoscopic that was introduced that time, probably 25 years ago. And it has uh, also its own complication, especially long-term complication, and majority of these complications, it's a, a band-related complications with uh, weight uh, radiant problems. Amidst the procedure, the commonest procedure is the rho and y gastric bypass, uh, uh, where we have a restriction of the food intake. So this procedure may be restrictive, uh, and there is just minimal uh, malabsorptive component, or uh, some said then they don't believe that it has any malabsorptive component. You just delay mixing the food with the, with the uh, secretions with the, uh, that can help in, in maintaining the weight loss for a longer time. This is probably the gold standard procedure. Still, we don't have a consensus about many things of the procedure, the size of the pouch, the size of the stoma, the length of the roll lamp, the length of the pelubancreatic lamp, and also um, the, the other variant of the gastric bypass, like the banded uh, gastric bypass, or recently the um, single anastomosis or mini gastric bypass. The third uh, time, I have a problem with this one. Back here. Okay. Uh, so the next one is that uh, so the third one is the malabsorptive procedure, which uh, will we have a. Uh, uh, these are the complications of the gastric bypass, and we have another mixture uh, to display the complications. In the malabsorptive procedure, we have two uh, big procedures, the scopinal or uh, bilimpropriatic diversion, and we have the other uh, variant, they call it the duodenal switch. So there is a difference uh, between the two procedures and the measurement of the uh, thank you. the measurement of the, the common limb. Uh, Dr. Khaled Mirza, who is the senior surgeon and uh, with a big uh, experience with this procedure, we will give you a talk this afternoon about malabsorptive procedure. So, I think the problem is me, not the. So I leave that, I will skip that because I want just to review with you the literature about the, the bariatric procedure to give you some, maybe your hand on the Surgery is more effective than conventional uh, management for uh, obesity, and this is clear. We have uh, in the New England Journal of uh, Medicine also they stated so this is from the famous SOS study, the Swedish. They, they take more than 4,000 uh, uh, patients and they follow them up for many years now, maybe more than 20 years. They conclude this paper by bariatric surgery for severe obesity is associated with long-term weight loss and decrease in overall mortality. Uh, again, uh, we have problems. I think if you write something here. So 10 years a trend in health-related quality of life in the same study, they mentioned that the long-lasting weight reduction in the Severely obese patient uh, has a general uh, uh, long standing uh, uh, improvement in the outcome of the health related quality of life. The bariatric surgery is a favorable option for the treatment of severe uh, obesity. 
the effect of bariatric surgery on cancer incidence, they, they conclude that or they interpret the, the study that bariatric surgery uh, has uh, or associated with reduced cancer incidence in obese men, but not in women. Uh, bariatric surgery in severe obese patients uh, with type 2 diabetes bariatric surgery resulted in better glucose control than medical therapy. 